Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the topic deviation of real gases from ideal behavior. So, in order to understand about real gases, we first have to understand ideal gases. And in order to understand about ideal gases, we have to understand kinetic theory of gases. There are various postulates of kinetic theory of gases, but uh, there are five main postulates that we are going to discuss right now. The first postulate is the molecules of a gas are in constant repeat and random and straight line motion. So as uh, we have seen in the diagram, we can consider that this room uh, is a container of a gas. Also, we cannot see uh, gas, so we can imagine that these gas molecules are constantly moving from one place to another and these motions are very much random and very much rapid and these motions are in a straight line motion so we can as we can see from this diagram the second postulate of kinetic theory is volume of the gas molecule is negligible in comparison to the total volume of the gas so if we consider this is the container of the gas molecules and this is the volume of the containers then uh, these will be the molecules. So we can say that volume of the gas molecules is uh, negligible in comparison to the total volume of the gas. Uh, the next postulate is there are no attractive forces between the gas molecules. They do not exert any force on each other. So if we consider uh, these gas molecules, then we can clearly say that there is no force of attraction or repulsion in between the gas molecules as they are very much apart, they are very much away from each other. And for the that reason they do not exert any force on each other. The next postulate is the molecules collide with the container walls and one another. These collisions are perfectly elastic. And as we can see from this diagram, the gas molecules in, at any time they uh, collide with the container walls and also they collide with each other. And these collisions can be called perfectly elastic. El perfectly elastic collisions mean uh, there is no loss of kinetic energy after collision. Next postulate is the average kinetic energy of the molecules is proportional to the Kelvin temperature of the sample. So as we can see from the diagram, when temperature is low, the molecules move with a lower, lower kinetic energy. But as uh, the temperature increases, their kinetic energy increases, their uh, motion becomes more rapid and more faster. So uh, now we are going to discuss about what are ideal gases. So ideal gases strictly obey the gas equation PV equal to nRT at all range of temperature and all range of pressures. Thus, they obey the gas laws such as Boyle's law, Sarif's law, Avogredo's law, Gay-Lussac's law. Ideal gases obeys all these gas laws. Two essential characteristics of an ideal gas are the size of the molecule is a, in an ideal gas can be uh, considered to be zero. That can be considered to be negligible. The, there is no force of attraction or repulsion among the molecules of an ideal gas. And then next, does we, the atoms do not exert forces on each other, but they do collide with the walls of the container. And these collisions can be called perfectly elastic. So we can understand that uh, ideal gases obeys all the postulates of kinetic theory of gases. They obey all the gas laws and they obey the equation, they obey the equation PV equal to nRT. So now what are real gases? Uh, we can say the gases we are practically dealing with our everyday life. It, is, it may be oxygen, it may be carbon dioxide, it may be hydrogen, it may be nitrogen. These are uh, practical gases and these gases can be called real gases. The gases that are real, that are practically available. So the term real gas usually refers to a gas that does not behave like an ideal gas. So there is no ideal gas practically available. There is no ideal gas and all the gases are called real gases and they are not perfect. They are not ideal. All gases, almost all gases deviate from ideal behavior. So uh, they show significant deviation. Deviation from ideal behavior are particularly observed at a high pressure and low temperature. When pressure is very high, the, the gas is compressed. At that condition, they deviate from ideal behavior and when temperature is low, their kinetic energy is low. At that condition, the real gases are highly deviates from, uh, real gases highly deviate from ideal behavior. 
So now we are going to discuss why real guesses deviate from ideal behavior. Why real guesses are not called ideal? So there are two postulates uh, in the kinetic theory of guesses that are wrong, that are practically not true. And we are going to discuss about those two postulates. The first one is the volume occupied by gas molecules is negligibly small as compared to the total volume occupied by the gas. Next postulate is the forces of attraction between gas molecules are negligible. So uh, what about the first postulate? Volume of the gas molecules. Volume occupied by the gas molecules is negligible as compared to the total volume of the gas. This assumption is valid only at low pressure and high temperature. But at low temperature and high pressure, the molecules being incompressible, the incompressible, the volumes of the molecules are no more negligible compared to the total volume of the gas. So we can consider these two situations. In the first situation, pressure is very low. So we can say that this is a, a container of a gas and we are using a piston and we are not putting any force, not putting any pressure here. So this is the volume of a gas molecule. So here, the volume of a gas molecule can be called uh, negligible in considered com in comparison to the total volume of the gas. But in case of a situation like this, when pressure is high, we are pressing the piston down and we are decreasing the volume of the gas. In this situation, the volume of a gas molecule is not negligible in comparison to the uh, volume of the gas. So we can see if this is a container and these are gas molecules, then we cannot say that the, the molecules, uh, volume of the molecules is negligible in comparison to the total volume of the gas because they are uh, having they are obtaining a acquiring a very high amount of space in the uh, total volume of the gas so next postulate is about intermolecular forces and the, the wrong assumption was the forces of attraction between gas molecules are negligible so a kinetic theory uh, told us that there is no forces of attraction between the gas molecules this assumption is also not valid when the pressure is high and temperature is low at high pressure and low temperature when the total volume of the gas is small the forces of attraction becomes appreciable and cannot be ignored so thus in real gases there are attractive and repulsive forces between the gas molecules which affect the behavior of the gas due to the force of attraction the collision between the gas molecules are uh, no longer elastic there is a loss of kinetic energy so if we consider these two as gas molecules we can clearly say that as they are uh, closer to each other there will be either attractive forces or there will be either repulsive forces so when the two molecules will come and collide with each other their collision will no longer be elastic they will deviate from their uh, they will deviate from their path and there will be loss of kinetic energy so next topic is compressibility factor. This is a very important term and it defines the uh, non-ideality of a real gas. It defines the deviation of a real gas from ideal behavior. So it is a uh, compressibility factor is a function denoted by Z that can be used to quantify the degree to which a real gas deviates from ideal behavior. So it is described as Z is equal to PV by RT. In case of ideal gas, PV equal to NRT. We all know this equation. So Z is 1, Z is equal to 1 at all range of temperature and pressure. But in case of real gases, PV is not equal to NRT. So Z will either be greater than 1 or will be less than 1. The degree of non-ideality of a gas is represented by the difference between Z and unity. If it is a ideal gas, Z will be equal to 1. So if it is a uh, non-ideal gas or real gas, Z will not be equal to 1. So difference between Z and 1, that value will give us the amount of non-ideality or amount of deviation from ideality. So pressure and temperature cause deviations from ideal behavior in a real gas. When Z is less than 1, it is called a negative deviation. It shows that gas is more compressible and then expected from ideal behavior. Such as gas can be easily liquefied it can be easily liquefied and when z is greater than one it is called positive deviation it shows that the gas is less compressible than expected from its ideal behavior such a gas cannot be easily liquefied so now we are going to discuss about effect of pressure on deviations so this is a graph uh, of z versus pressure graph graph so and this graph is uh, for the molecules of hydrogen nitrogen and carbon dioxide gas at constant temperature 
So as we can see that for all the gases, Z is practically equal to one at a low pressure. When pressure is low, all the gases starts from this value, one value. So uh, we can say real gases behave almost perfectly at low pressures up to 10 atmospheric pressure. As the pressure rises, hydrogen exhibits a steady increase in Z. As, as a result, the uh, hydrogen curve is higher than the ideal gas curve at all pressure. This is the ideal curve and we can see that hydrogen is always greater than 1 as the pressure increases. For nitrogen and then carbon dioxide, that de Z decreases at first. For, for this is for nitrogen, this is for carbon dioxide, Z value decreases initially but after a certain point, the Z value starts increasing in all these two cases with increasing pressure. Because carbon dioxide is the most easily liquefied gas, it has the greatest drop in the curve. So, it has the carbon dioxide curve has the curve has the greatest drop in this in here. So, it is the most easily liquefiable gas. So, now uh, effect of temperature on deviations. So, the graph, uh, this graph is uh, PV by RT or Z versus pressure curve for nitrogen at different uh, temperature. This contains three different temperature as well as the ideal gas curve curve is also there. As the temperature rises, the deviations from ideal gas behavior become smaller and smaller as shown by the shape of the uh, three graphs. At lower temperature, the curve dips significantly and the slope of the curve is negative. In this situation, there is less than 1. As we can see, at 200 Kelvin, there is a dip and dip is the highest. At uh, 500 Kelvin also, there is a dip and uh, dip is less than the 200 Kelvin curve. So, at this two situations, Z is less than 1. As the temperature rises, dip in the curve decreases. So, as we can see, when temperature increases uh, from 200 to 500 Kelvin and 500 to 1000 Kelvin, dip decreases. And the curve's minimum vanishes at a certain temperature and remains horizontal for a wide range of, range of pressure. After a certain point, the uh, dip decreases and the curve starts becoming horizontal and it stays horizontal for a wide range of pressure. At this pressure temperature, PV by RT is nearly equal to 1. So, at this pressure, PV by RT equal, becomes equal to 1. That is, Boyle's law is uh, satisfied and this temperature is therefore called Boyle temperature. Which temperature? When the uh, curve, uh, deep of the curve decreases, minimum of the curve decreases and it starts uh, uh, becoming horizontal for a wide range of pressure. That is called the Boyle temperature. Each uh, gas has its own Boyle temperature and uh, for nitrogen, we can say the Boyle temperature is 332 Kelvin. So, uh, important, uh, some of the important facts we have learned in this uh, class. Real gases perform approximately ideal at low pressures and uh, relatively high temperatures and the ideal gas equation is obeyed. So, when ideal gas equation is obeyed, when pressure is very low, we are uh, reducing the pressure. Uh, pressure is very low and temperature is very high. At the high temperature, kinetic energy in, in increases, they will start moving randomly and at low pressure, there will be enough space for the gas, their attraction will be decreased because molecules will be uh, far more apart from each other. So, at this situation, they behave uh, as ideal gases. At re uh, real gas, they reach greatly from ideality at low temperatures and sufficiently high pressure. At low temperature and sufficiently high pressure, we are increasing the pressure, their distance will be uh, reduced, there will be enough attractive forces between each other, their collisions uh, will increase and there will not be elastic collisions. At this situation, they uh, ideal, uh, they will highly deviate from ideal gas behavior and ideal gas equation is no longer valid for this uh, condition. As the gas approaches the liquefaction point, the departure from ideal uh, behavior go grows. So, when a gas reaches a liquefaction point, that means it is about to become a liquid. So, when uh, it is about to become a liquid, it is, uh, it is going to its liquid phase, that means their intermolecular attractions are increasing, there will be attractive forces. So, at this kind of situation, they will prefer to be a liquid rather than a gas and as uh, uh, their attractions are increasing, they will highly deviate from ideal behavior and they will start behaving like liquid. So, at the liquefaction point, means when they are about to become a liquid, the departure from ideal behavior grows. Their deviation from ideal behavior will increase. 
so uh, in the next class we are going to discuss about van der waals equation van der waals constant a and b and we are going to discuss why van der waals equation is important for us and why van der waals equation is important in an order to understand real gases and their deviation from ideal behavior uh, that's all for today thank you everyone